Yo, what's up aliens? Ahi here with another tutorial. Today we're going to be going over how to get those really punchy drums in your mix. First off, I just want to say I have like a new setup here to record it going from one computer to another. So this is a new recording process for me which I'm very very excited about because I'm going to be streaming my production sessions on Twitch here soon. Be sure to give my Twitch a follow. I'm going to provide a link down below. But let's get into the tutorial. So first off I'm going to show you all a new track of mine. It's called Right Now. It's with this group called Lynx. I'm super stoked with how the drums came out on it. It's going to be coming out this Friday on Play Me Records and I'll just show you the drop of that right now. We're going to be going over how I mix the drums from the drop. All right, cool. So it gets you an idea of what we're going for. So here I'll play the kick and snare just by themselves. And we'll add in the top drums, all the cymbals. Sounds full and alive. So let's figure out how did we get here? One of the biggest things I can tell y'all is sample selection is such a big deal. I learned this from uh, reading an interview with Porter Robinson. You can write a song and the ideas will be good, but the sound will be off. I'm sure y'all have experienced that before. And really what it comes down to is what type of samples that you're using that will make or break the song. And then what you can do to those samples in the mixing process. I ended up going with this kick sample right here. It's nice and punchy. It's short. I actually, and I actually shortened it and put a little bit of a curve to it here with the fades. So that way I could make it really nice and short. But it's still got some oomph in there. So here's some drums that I wanted to show y'all just that just wouldn't work for this song because I think it's interesting to mention bad ideas. That's like a more natural kick from like a, a drum kit that doesn't really work with this because it, it doesn't have the electronic attack to it. This kick is like more boomy. It, it's got a little bit of attack to it, but it's just got this like weird boom and you can actually see in the sample itself. It's like almost two samples put together. Now here's another sample. That sample, you know, is more electronic, but it's a little boomy and the, the click is a little trancy. And for this song, I, I wanted it to be have a little bit more of a thud than a click. And here, the, the kick that we have, it, it's got a little bit more air to the top of it than this one. Yeah, another thing is to make sure that your kick sample doesn't have distortion in it. We'll probably add distortion later, but it's you want to start with a clean source generally. Now that I had a, a kick that was that had this nice low punch to it, I did want another kick that had a little bit more texture to it. And so I found this kick is more of a stomp and the low end on it's not good at all but i'm not concerned about the low end i'm just listening to the high end on this kick i added in a eq8 i've cut out everything below 200 hertz on it and then i've boosted the highs above 735 so the highs and the mids so together they sound like this just the low kick now together it feels both real and electronic at the same time. Another thing to note is that I did not include the top kick on every single kick. I did it on the down beats, but didn't include it on the off beats. That allows there to be some variation in the kick drum sound. Later on in the song, I have a second drop that is more of this, the straight dubstep downbeat. And there I have the top kick on every kick because they're on the downbeats. Next, to help beef these up, I wanted to use some transient shaping. Now, my favorite transient shaper at the moment is the Isotope Neutron transient shaper because it's multiband and it just works really well. So here on the main kick, I'll turn it on 
and we'll see what I've done. I've boosted the attack of the low. I've turned down the sustain, so that way it's making it punchier. It's taking away the boominess. Again, I'm basically upping the attack in every regard, but then allowing more of that mid to come through, taking away less of the sustain there. So we'll hear it before and after. Before, after. You can hear a little bit more of the air and you can tell it's gotten a little bit tighter. Now I'll do the same thing with the top drum where I've upped the attacks and turned down the sustains, thusly making it punchier. Here's the before and after. Here's the before and after. You can hear it, it's got a little bit more attack there. And now together, both the high kick and low kick. Now you can see here that I am going above zero on my kick and we'll get to later why I'm doing that when we get to the group effects process. Here in the snares, I found a really good snare that had like a bit of a thud to it. It's got some air in it as well, but not too much and it's relatively short. But I wanted to layer that with some other snares that had a little bit more character because this, this snare is a little, it's almost dead in a way, but the low end of it is great. Specifically, if we look in Span, my favorite plugin. It's got a nice fundamental in that 200 hertz ish range. Mine happens to be around 160. Now I found another snare here. This one's like a straight dubstep snare, but I didn't really like the fundamental of it, but I liked the air of it. So I included that in and then I EQ'd that. So that way we're just getting the air. Uh, so I've cut everything below 500. 79 hertz and I've boosted the high end of it as well So it's just that shh. Yeah, and then also something to note is that I have alternated the length of the sample every other snare So it's like short longer shorter Longer I also added in a third snare in this layer and this snare is more for texture. It also doesn't have a very good fundamental. Here's the original. And they're actually alternating every single snare. It's a different snare. So these are what this layers of sounds like. And again, none of those are really good on their own, but it's really nice just to have some sort of unique texture for every snare in a four bar pattern. So again, I will EQ out all the low end, and then I'll also apply OTT. And if you don't know OTT, I have another video going in depth on how to use OTT, but it is a preset from Ableton's multiband dynamics plugin. It stands for over the top. And I basically only use these three controls here on the side. The amount, the time to the right is punchier, to the left is squishier and then the output, which is basically just gain. And so here I'm using this to just bring out all the subtle textures in this texture snare. Here back on the main snare, I go through and apply some processing to it. These utilities are really just here to automate the snare build. For the snare, I EQ out the low end, everything below 100 hertz. I still want that 160 hertz, but I don't want any of the information below it. And then also I apply a generous amount of OTT. So here it is with and without those effects. You know, it brings out that air a little bit. Together, the three snares sound like this. And you can see that each one is just a little bit different, but like not different enough to be like wildly different sounding, but different enough so that way there's like a feel of like each hit has a unique flavor and just brings it alive a little bit more. Next, we're going to talk about the group effects. Look at all these. So when I start my process, I generally only have the FabFilter Pro L on the group. I, and I have a lot of other videos talking about why I put the limiters on my groups. And the settings in this are just the default settings. There's really nothing special. And But this is where you'll see why I turned up the volumes of those other kicks and snares. Oh yeah, something to mention on those snares, you'll see here my main snare is turned up to 1.4 dB. And then the other two more textural snares are turned down. This one's just left alone because the dB of the actual samples is so much lower. 
And what this limiter allows me to do is to really, I could turn up those volumes all the way and it still wouldn't clip into the red. And so it really, the limiter really catches the transient. So, so far our beat sounds like this. Which is pretty good on itself, but we're gonna take it to that next level. So first of all, in the groups, I actually applied my Magic Box, which this thing is just amazing. I use it on almost everything. It's a combination of four different types of compression in Ableton, and you can just throw it on your groups or sound, and it just does magic. So here it is with and without. Actually, I applied two of them to this song. Here's what it does when you add a second one. You can tell that it really brings out all the detail in those textured snares. And my settings are basically the same, except for I turned down the OTT part of the Magic Box. And I'll provide a link below where y'all can get the Magic Boxes as part of my Magic Racks. So next, I added in another Neutron Transient Shaper and did that same thing where I boosted the attacks and turned down the sustains because when I had added the Magic Boxes, it was almost like too much detail was in the sustain of the snares. And so by taking those away, it really helped. And also it took away the boominess of the kick as well. So after that, I actually felt like I wanted to add in, it's, it's a weird game of giving and taking away the amount of transient and the amount of sustain in the samples. And so here I applied a little bit more of OTT. You don't really hear that much because it's not a full on thing, but it's like the really subtle amounts. And then also here I've applied another transient shaper where I'm just doing these really fine tuned adjustments where I'm boosting the attack. I'm actually boosting the sustain here and then I'm boosting the sustain as well on the mids, which is where you're going to get some of that detail of the snare and again boosting the attack it's fiddling with those things and finding out where your mix sits really well where you can hear all the details of things but also hear how they punch through this eq was just an effect later on so that's not really doing much and then here the overdrive i'm just adding in a little bit of distortion and so i actually have another pro l here that i put in between my train shapers and the magic boxes here you'll see that it actually is catching a lot of the peaks of the transients look how much that's catching this is just the normal settings default settings playing around with the order of these things and experimenting with what gives you the most impact while being a smooth impact while also giving you the texture of the elements and making sure everything is clean along the way and not overly saturating or overly distorting any particular sound. So then here, this final limiter is actually not catching many trains. It's just more keeping it from clipping. And then the final thing I did in the group effects is I add in the isotope stereo imager. And basically all I'm doing is making the sub mono and I'm making the whole beat a little bit more mono in general. And then I'm boosting the sides a little bit. In my mix, I wanted the drums to be you know, front and center, uh, and then have the other elements in the track take up more of the sides. This isn't going to be the case in every single song, but for this particular song, you want to be aware of where your drums are placed in the mix. And so this helped me achieve a more mono compatible sound while still being super full. The last thing to make these drums really punchy was to create space for them. And that's what I did here with these side chains. So I have a whole nother video on side chaining to ghost kicks, but basically I have this little sample of white noise. Sounds like this, super short. So I have that triggering whenever there's a kick, I have one of those little clicks. And then here for the snares, every time there's a snare, I have a little click and they're muted. And then here, like on the bass effects group, I have a sidechain kick that is ducking the entire bass. And then there's some other elements in the song that have that sidechain as well. And so this combination of sample selection, layering, EQing out the low end, transient shaping, heavily compressing, adding light distortion, and limiting plus side chaining all create a more cohesive punchy drum so here for the top drums i don't want to go too much into the top drums because you don't really make top drums punchy at least i don't in this particular song but i'll go a little bit over what 
I'm um, affecting. Basically, there's very little effects on the actual samples themselves. I think I'm cutting out some low end, more or less, on different samples. And then here on the group of the top drums, I'm saturating it a little bit, uh, giving it a little bit of OTT. Also, I've got two channels. One's a dry channel, and then one's a, a fully wet channel with the vintage verb, which is fully mixed wet and it's just got a very very short decay there just to give it like a room sound and then again i've also cut out the low end also boosted the air a little bit and then here yeah i've cut it out even more here and then actually brought down the thing it's okay to boost and cut in the same frequencies because the minute differences on the position of the frequency is going to affect the overall shape of the EQ band and how the final sound is. And then I've got a limiter also on this group, but honestly, if we look inside the limiter, it's not even doing anything. It's just... I just have it on my group and my templates uh, for my songs are also up on my gum road. Yeah, and just adding in the saturation is just a tad bit of saturation on the cymbals is pretty nice. And also here on the group, I've turned it down a little bit. And something to note is that I'm not sidechaining on the top drums because I personally feel like you're not going to hear a drum kit in a rock band sidechained. No one's sidechaining the cymbals and the the kick and snare sort of take up a different part of the frequency band. You know, in the high end, you can have more content in that area because there's so much more information while the low end, you generally only want to have one thing or another. And also something to note is that I have my kick and snare group here at zero dB. What's cool about having the limiter on the group is that forcing all these sounds into the limiter like that almost creates a side chaining like effect because the loudest sound will hit the limiter first and duck the volumes of the other elements that are going through that same limiter group. And this is why people will experience limiting issues when they have too loud of a bass. And whenever the bass hits in their song and they have a limiter on it, it will duck the rest of the sound whenever the bass hits. And so I'm using that mistake or that accident that happens in sort of a creative way in this instance. So yeah, that's how I made my drums super punchy in my track called Right Now, which will be released on Play Me Records on May 8th. I'll provide a link below where y'all can pre-save it. And before I go, I want to show y'all some of the applications of my Magic Racks, which I'll provide a link to below in the description. I've just got a regular almond break here. And now I'm going to apply the magic box to it just as the settings are how it comes. Pretty cool how that beefs it up there so simply by just turning this thing on. And I use this thing more than any other plugin. Honestly, I use the magic box in almost everything I do. I also have a version of the magic box that just has two knobs. This is like a subtler version of it. Here, I'll turn it on and off. And I really like to have it set anywhere between like 3 and 30 as like a subtler kind of compression, adding like a character or a flavor to it. But it can go pretty crazy. But generally, I don't like that kind of sound. I like to keep it a little bit smoother. And so both of those are part of the Magic Racks Volume 1. I also have a couple that are part of the Magic Racks Volume 2 called Magic Drum Shaper. This one's really fun. I've been using this a lot more and more. I particularly like using the punchy and crispy settings. Very different sound. Yeah, it controls the transients in a pretty interesting way there. There's also the Magic Transient Designer, which I believe this is part of the, the add-on racks. There's like eight racks there. This one, I tried to make a Transient Designer that would work inside Ableton. I feel like the Drum Shaper is that as well, but this was another attempt at creating a Transient Shaper inside of Ableton. So here, I'll play this. You really don't hear anything until you start messing with it.
pretty cool. And it's also got the magic rack with two knobs built inside of it so you can add a little bit of subtle that. Finally, I've got the fat magic rack, which this thing I based off of the sausage fattener. Now this thing works really well on basses, but sometimes it also works well on drums. So here, it, I'll just throw it on. Pretty cool, fattens it up pretty well. Again, these are part of my Magic Rack series. I'll provide a link below. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe. Hit that bell button to get notified when I upload more tutorials. And then hopefully I will see y'all on Twitch when I start live streaming my uh, production sessions. All right, peace aliens. <laughs>